Hello, my name is Scott Golightly, and I want to show you today how you can use the wizards in SQL Server 2008 to set up replication. In SQL Server, replication uses the magazine publisher terminology. We have a publisher, which is a database that has source information. We have a distributor, which is going to keep track of the changes to that publisher, and then distribute those changes out to what are called subscribers, or the databases that are, are getting the changes from the publisher. Um, and so we'll go ahead and start running the wizards to set this all up. I'm going to start off in SQL Server Management Studio. I'll right click on the replication node and I'm going to choose configure distribution from the pop-up menu. This starts a wizard for me that allows me to choose what I want to do. I'm going to um, use this server, SQL Server 2008 is the name of it, as its own distributor. Um, I could also put the distributor on a different machine if I was expecting that to um, use a lot of system resources. It's next asking me for the folder where I'm going to put the snapshot. The snapshot is necessary to make sure that at some point in time both the publisher and the um, subscriber have the same data. And in this case it's on a folder underneath my SQL Server installation and the warning is telling me that uh, remote machines will not be able to connect to it. So I'll change it to a share which is going to be SQL 2008, the name of the machine, REPL data, which I've already created on my machine. And you can see here that it's an empty folder. And I'll click Next. It's going to ask me the name of the distribution database, and I'll choose the default here. And then it's going to ask me for publishers. In this case, I'll just use my server as a publisher. I'll click Next and then it's going to ask me what I want to do. If I want to configure distribution or generate a script file, I get a confirmation screen and then I can click finish. So now that this is finished, I'll go ahead and click on close and start the next step which is to create a publication. So I will right click again on the replication node. I will go down to the new option and then I will say a new publication. And in this case um, I run a different wizard that's going to allow me to choose which database I want to publish. So this is looking at the user databases that are available and I'll choose the AdventureWorks database. It's going to ask me the type of publication. A snapshot publication just takes a read-only copy of the database or a copy of the database and moves it over to the subscriber. Transactional publication will send changes um, in near real time. So it's not a two-phase commit, but as transactions commit on the publisher, they're moved to the distributor and then um, moved out to uh, the subscribers on a particular schedule. Transactional publication with update subscriptions works the same way except that I can update the subscribers and have some of that data come back to the publisher. And then emerge publication is where I might have um, changes occurring in multiple locations and I want to have all those occur uh, and be replicated to all the different uh, subscribers. And in emerge publication if a particular row and column uh, has data updated in two different places and the changes are different, then we go through um, some sort of uh, algorithm to determine which of those changes is actually kept. In this case I want to choose transactional publication and I'll click on next and it's going to ask me the tables. I'm going to just pick a couple of the tables from AdventureWorks out of the person schema and I'll click on next if I wanted to filter the data, I could. I would click on Add here. I would choose the table that I wanted to look at. Um, let's say country region. And maybe I wanted to select only ones where the name was like uh, some value. And I could, uh, I could go ahead and put that in there. In this case, I don't want to restrict the data. So I'll cancel out of that and just click Next from the main window. I'm going to be asked about when I want to create the subscription. I will say I want to create it immediately. I'll click on Next. And now I have to give it um, information about the account that's going to access this. 
and generally I'd want to set up a service account but in this case uh, I haven't and for demo purposes I'm just going to use the local administrator account and then the next question is going to be um, how do I want to connect to the publisher and uh, in this case I could either give it um, different permissions to connect up to that AdventureWorks database or I can say impersonate the process account um, and since the administrator has permissions to that database I'll go ahead and just do that I'll click next and now it's going to ask me again do I want to create the publication or generate script files uh, in this case I'll just click the generate script files as well so that we can see what they look like it's going to ask me where to put them uh, put that file so we'll just put it in my documents create publication.sql and I'm going to click next I have to provide a name for the publication so we'll call it adventure works publication and I'll click finish so now the wizard has finished creating the publication I'll go ahead and close this and let's go and look at what that query looks like these are all of the transact SQL commands that I would need to run uh, in order to set up this publication so now the next thing that I want to do is to right click on the replication node and choose the launch replication monitor the replication monitor is what I'm going to use to look at and monitor the health of my replication so I start off looking at the publishers and I see that its status is okay and then I can drill down into my publication and click on it and make sure that it's working as well so I see that um, the agents are all running and everything is okay and I don't have any warnings so now I can go and start adding subscriptions I'm going to minimize this and to add the subscription I'm going to connect to another server um, in this case it happens to be on the same machine but uh, it could be anywhere on the network that I have connectivity uh, in order for the publication to work I need to make sure that the SQL Server agent is started so I'll start that I can right click on the replication node choose new and choose new subscription this runs again a different wizard for my subscriptions I click on next it's going to ask me for the publisher uh, since that instance is not publishing I have to say find a SQL Server publisher instance and I'll go back to my SQL 2008 default it finds the publications that are available I can choose one I'll click on next and now it's asking me where I want to run my uh, agent so the the piece that's going to handle the snapshot as well as um, all of the incoming transactions in this transaction replication if I run them at the distributor that means that I only have one place to look and it's easier to centrally manage that uh, if I run it at the subscriber that offloads the processing power and and all of that to the different subscribers uh, we'll keep it at the subscriber here um, and that's why I need to start the SQL Server agent on this instance of SQL Server. It's going to ask me for a subscription database and in this case um, I don't have one so I'll choose a new database and I will call it ADV Works Subscriber. I'll click OK and create the database and once that's created then I'll click Next it's going to ask me for my connection information to the subscriber and again we would generally in a domain use a domain service account but here I'm going to use the administrator account and then it's going to ask me how I'm going to connect to the distributor um, again I could provide different SQL Server uh, login credentials or I'm going to impersonate the process account and when I connect to the subscriber I must um, uh, use impersonation I don't have the option for a SQL login. Once I set the credentials, I'll click on Next. And it's going to ask me how often do I want to run this at the subscriber. And I'll run it continuously. 
I have the option for on demand. So if I'm on a uh, unreliable connection or if maybe I'm running this on a laptop that's not always connected up to the network, um, I could just run this on demand. Uh, and the third option is to define a schedule. So if I'm running across a WAN that has maybe a slow link or um, that has something that is expensive and I want to do this during off hours uh, and the particular business need allows me to be a little bit out of date, I can set up a schedule. Uh, and I may also want to just set, run it something like once every 10 minutes if, uh, if I don't need the data to be that up to date. I'll click Next. And it's going to ask me when I want to initialize the subscription. When do I want to apply the snapshot? So I'll click Next um, to tell it to initialize immediately. And I'm going to create the subscription. I'll click Next and finally I will click Finish. I see that the subscription has been created um, correctly and successfully. And what it's really done now is it's taken the data out of the um, folder that I created the share with the snapshot. So if I go in there and look at it, um, I see that I have now a new folder UNC, a um, folder underneath that for the subscription, and one for the date time. And now I see all of these different BCP files that are created for me. It's taken those, it's added them to the database, and if I look in the databases on my subscriber, I should see that I have now those three tables that I have uh, published out. So if I go and look at, um, say, person address, and I'll select the top thousand rows, I'm going to see that uh, for address ID 1, my address line 2 is null. Uh, I can go back into my publisher, database, adventure works, tables, and I can choose that same person address table. And in this case, I want to edit the rows. And I will change, instead of the address line being uh, null, or address line 2 being null, I'll change it to say it's apartment 1, I'm sorry, B1. Well, we'll give it something like that. Once I hit enter, that's going to commit that to the publisher, which is going to put the information in the transaction log. The distribution agent uh, and the distributor is going to be reading and monitoring that transaction log. It's going to find the transaction, put it in the distributor database, and then it's going to take and make those changes over to the subscriber database. So if I switch back over to my subscriber and I execute this again, you'll see that the changes have been made to the subscriber. And so uh, in near real time, I'm being able to update my data. The other thing that I can do in Replication Monitor um, is I can go in here and look at my performance and see how things are going. If I think things are running a little slow, I can insert a tracer. And I can see when it was inserted at the publisher. Uh, and that just basically puts a dummy transaction in there that's going to be read. You can see how long it takes it from the publisher to the distributor the distributor to the subscriber and I get the total latency. So I can see how long it's taking uh, in order to run this and determine then if that's too long and, and uh, if I need to start looking at network connections or other problems that might be slowing this down. And I can also go in and view the different uh, agents that are running, the jobs that are running, and I can see um, what's happening with those so I can see the the process and monitor uh, those from my replication monitor. So now you've seen how you can use the wizards that are built into SQL Server 2008 and SQL Server Management Studio to set up replication on your machine and to be able to replicate changes to data uh, in one database to one or more databases uh, in other places in your enterprise.